You're now watching Rhymes and Politics. Check, check it out. Spit the balls. So just talk about um, you guys and MOP moving that, pushing that, that boundary with the hardcore hip-hop movement. Just talk about how y'all was pushing that, that, that style right there from Brownsville. Yeah, to be honest with you, I mean, MOP, see, a lot of people didn't know that me and Smooth wasn't um, a rap group. Right. We were two solo artists. Yeah, y'all just... It's just that we're brothers. We're real brothers. Yeah. And the fact that we know each other so well, we can do a team album exactly. together. Exactly. We can get together as a group. Mm -hmm. MOP, you know, they came together as a group. They, was, they grew up together. Right good friends um i think for them telling their side of the story of brownsville from where we all come from and me and smooth telling our side of the story right and op and them they were street dudes too mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it's a lot of stuff they was doing in the streets and their team was doing yeah but we could only speak from our point of view of what me and smooth was doing yeah so y'all are y'all like a couple blocks from each yeah, other yeah we was like in about the, in the... three blocks from each other yeah, on, right Saratoga, oh, on okay. saratoga yeah so they so, on this side y'all on this side yeah right so here. we gotta pass each other every day no matter if we go on the shopping area to area or they go into the train yeah we gotta pass three each train other. yeah yeah you so know, or, or a train i'm sorry oh, a train. on the a train side on the a train oh, okay side. got you um because we were, we were closer to herkimer and, 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 and Fulton Street. I know, I'm from like the Bronx. Y'all forgive yeah. me, I'm from the Bronx. Nah, I know a little good. bit about Brooklyn <laughs> when I go out there. Yeah. I try to memorize when I be going places. Yeah. So I kind of move around New York. I don't care. Like, yeah, definitely. I, I, this definitely. thing where the Brooklyn don't want to come to the Bronx. Man, that, don't go, I, see, I don't care you, about none of that. that I'm New York. That man. been going on for so many years, but that never stopped me. I've been in the Bronx. I mean, since I was a kid, man. Yeah. Castle Hill, Gun yeah. Hill Road, like all that stuff. We, me and Smooth, I don't think there's a borough that we ain't been in and hang out in or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I got six children. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they all spread. Right. And they, they all know each other. They all hang with each other. I got my kids in there now, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, this is this is what we do. It's not a place that, you know, and, and I'm, not, I'm not there to brag or nothing. It's just not a place that me and my brother was, oh, uh, you know, you can't go here or you can't, or you're not accepted here. And, you know... We ain't go through that type of stuff. Okay. And even if we did, then it was going to be a challenge up your ass. Because, <laughs> right. uh, you know what I'm saying? We hard-headed niggas. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I didn't know about checking in and all that other shit and all that. You know what I'm saying? We just did what we did. We popped in your hood. We popped in your hood. A lot of times when we went out and on tour, our main thing was wanting to see the hood. Dick Pride. Even though we came from the hood, we like, man, we want to see the hood. We're the I was hood. The same way. Like, I don't care where we went, where's the hood? Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. We we ain't stay in the hotel rooms. Put it like this me and, me and Smooth ain't never been on tour with security. Right. Ever. In a day in our life. Ain't never had security with us ever to do none of this music shit. Anywhere we ever went, we ain't had no security. It was just us and our homeboys. Mm -hmm. That's it. So when you, you know, all this guys putting the security and all that on top of all this stuff, they making it what it is. Right. Because back then, you know, I didn't even think of none of that, to yeah. be honest with you. Because when you a hood dude, you come from the hood, you know, you want to protect your money, you want to protect all that, but you're going to get the people to protect you that you trust. Right. No. Exactly. People get in your camp by you trying to say, oh, big man, oh, he big man, he a big dude, I need him with me. Right, <laughs> yeah. You know, yep. fair. Sometimes yep. the artist is so scared, he pick anybody to come <laughs> with him. Yo, big dude, because he big, I want him with me. Right. <laughs> Get out of here, he big for nothing, ass uh -huh. nigga. Yep. Like, you know what I'm saying? So to me, it was like, I got I got four or five straight shooters with me, and I ain't talking about shooters, I'm just talking about real stand-up exactly. brothers. Yep. Four or five of them with me, that's all I need. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I know I'm a stand-up brother, mm -hmm. I know what it is, so... I don't need 15 different dudes around me, a whole entourage wow, or yeah. five or six big dudes standing, pushing everybody back and all that stuff. And mm -hmm. I don't need all that, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Me, I'm a people person anyway. So if a person wanted to have a conversation or talk, all they got to do is holler at me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, yo, what's up? What's mm -hmm. up? I don't care if you're behind the barricade, behind the line. I'm the type of brother that's going to stop. Be like, yo, what's up? What's good? You good? <laughs> yo, we trying to get in there, Trick. How many of y'all is there? No it? doubt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What, it's about, what, five or six? Come on. That's what's up. You know what I'm saying? Man. I throw shit like that to yep. get a cut at the end of the day. I know how that shit is. Mm -hmm. Getting in, standing on the line, waiting to get in. 
Man, I've been through all that. I felt so, that energy the first day you know I met saying? you, man. We, we just we locked in and hugged up. I felt Definitely, that vibe, man. that energy. I was like, yeah, yeah, you one of those. Bro, hells yeah, you know? man. Because me in the industry itself, I just always been the type of brother, like, if, if I got something and I get on and I'm doing right, I like to pull my homie and no I like doubt. to pull this one in. Yep. It's, I don't think that it's not one time I've ever been just on anything I ever do, business-wise, um, you know, as uh, far as music, far as my business, it's my, my company and things like that, mm -hmm. that I've ever put anybody in a messed up predicament or really turned my friends down. Right. If I knew you had potential potentials to do things, I took that chance, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because I just felt everybody deserves a chance, yeah. no matter what. Um, just me now, like I moved half of my team down to Virginia. Wow. To make sure each one of them have a job. Right. Because the, the main thing of life is survival. Mm -hmm. You have to, the, the money is just a tool, the tool of life yeah. to carry you through life. But if you, you know, and me, I manifest off a lot of other things, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I speak a lot of things into manifestation. Right. And um, a lot of people don't understand that. Do you write stuff down too and, and I, look I, at it sometimes? I write it and look at it, but I also learned that sometimes when you write things down, then the other person can see it, meaning mm. the evil person. Okay. The evil one sees it and yeah. he can backtrack it. Okay. So sometimes the things that come from here, that's why God gave you that. Mm -hmm. And you just repeat it in your you mind. Repeat it in your mind yeah. because you don't have to let it loose. Right. Verbally. People think you have to say it out loud. No, you don't. It's all in the brain. The mm -hmm. brain is the manifest. It's what... It takes you to a different dimension. Mm -hmm. And I'm always in a different dimension. Yeah. No matter if I'm around people in the dimension that they are in at that moment, I'm always looking on the side at every angle of things from a whole different dimension. Right. Yeah. You know, and so a lot of times I could see things, you know, uh, manifesting or about to happen before it happened or just know things is going to, the outcome will come out like this. So a lot of times when I reach out to my friends and I'm like, hey, you going through something? Yeah, I'm going, come here. Yeah. I could change it in one month. Okay. Wow. That's, and then, that's what's And up. then when you have them trusting in you. Exactly. To come. Mm -hmm. And then you're able to show them it can be done in one month. Yeah. That makes them believers. That's where it's at. Yeah. That's where it's at. Talk about some of these uh, relationships you have in the industry, because y'all met, y'all was running with Biggie a little bit too, right? Y'all met. Yeah. Them. Um. To be honest with you, we knew everybody. I mean, yeah, it's Foxy not an Brown, artist. Brown. They was all coming to yeah, you guys. Y'all was also writing out. for them. Some of them too. Pat Poos. Yeah. Well, not writing for Pat. Pat right, is a right. writer. Pat is an ill writer. Yeah. Um. Pat is just a homeboy. I knew him from I know him from school and around the way. Pat used to run with me. Oh, okay. Um, Wow. When me and Smooth was on heavy, Pat was like right there wow. with me. So Pat learned so much and, and watched and understood a lot okay. about the industry and about what comes with it. Okay. And seeing the downfalls, the ups and downs and all yeah, that. That's why he's so successful now, yeah, man. Yeah, exactly. Salute to Pat Poos, man. Keep doing what you're doing, up, my brother. Big up. That's my yeah, dude. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, he was a humble, mm -hmm. humble dude. Pat was never one of those dudes Yeah, I can see that, it was out there like, yo, yo, you know, I got to be down, yo, I'm going to do this, this, and that. Nah, Pat was our observer. He exactly. just observed everything. In the cut, watching. I see, Watch yeah, I, I everything, peeped that too. Man. I seen a few. Uh, yeah. We was just at the K Slade joint. They came through. Right. To show support. And I just see how he moved. I was like, yeah, yeah I could tell. I mean, Pat, is, Pat, Pat moved the way he been moving. Mm -hmm. Humble. Um, quietly. People say secretively. Mm -hmm. But I just feel that it's that man's personal business, you right. know, he do what he do by protecting it mm -hmm. and protecting his family and his wife and exactly. protecting everybody around him. Yep. Um, I, I watch Pat grow from just being in school rapping to being what he doing right now. Wow. You know, and him watching me, same way, coming yeah. to my house like, Trig, yo, I'm loving what you're doing, big up, you know. And you my ever thing did was- music together? Yeah, plenty of music. Okay. Um, uh, I've talked to Pat so many times, like far as coming up in the industry stuff and giving him game on just how he should move in it, mm -hmm. um, what to watch out for in it. Um, I even got to the point where I used to be telling Pat, yo, when you get in the industry, yo, you should have leather jackets on with hats that match it. <laughs> yeah. Like, that should be your look. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like I, used I, see, to, I see you seeing with the leather, with the leather fitted. Yeah, like I used to, see, yeah. you gotta think, this is before 
this is before he was doing the the, the freestyle um, mixtapes. Yeah. Before he was doing, you know, I used to school him all the time and just say, yo, you should look like this. You should wear this. Mm -hmm. and, and even when Pap got into it, I see he was going in that that zone yeah. of wearing certain things that match. But that's him. That's his. That's Pap. Because yeah. me looking at him, I only got an image of him by looking at him. Right, right. So it wasn't like, you know, I created something to say, yo, Pap, you should look like this. Like, yeah. nah. It was just an image. Because Pap always had the hat cocked. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, him and my boy Flip. God yeah. bless the dad. His cousin Strong. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They... You know, I miss those days right there, you know what I'm saying? Because those were the genuine days of really trying to understand hip hop and learn it. Mm -hmm. You know, and he was around for that. And 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 times, you know, we would be in a, the barbershop or the gambling spot or whatever, you know, because we had a gambling spot and barbershop with my boy Lil Pop. Okay. Lil Pop from the barbershop. You that, know, that's, 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 that's the one that's Biggie was talking Biggie about? Talking. Yo, that's great. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And that's that's one of my that was one of my right hands right there. You wow. know, we used to do a lot together. Yeah. You know, um, we grew up together. Everything. So, like I said, that whole movement of artists. Foxy was with us. Foxy was with us when she was from like twelve years old. How she came around? Um, one of our guys. He was a manager. Um, they used to work with my manager in Dr. Period. Um, that brought her around. Okay. And he brought her to the family. And she was young, you know, cute little girl at mm -hmm. the time, sweet. Her brother Gavin and all of them, you know, they was cool as shit. Um, they started bringing her around, and me and Smooth, Smooth got more cling to her. Like, yo, this is my little sis right here, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? And being, me and Christ being who we are, you know, that's my brother. She's family, she ain't. No doubt. That's little sis. Ain't yeah. nobody fucking with her, doing nothing to her, nothing. So, you know, that's what it was. We, we was holding her down. Then she wanted to look like us and dress like us. So. Me and Smooth used to always buy Pelly Pelly coats and <laughs> leather Pellies and all yeah. that shit. And Smooth used to, you know, throw us joints. And yeah. we would all go just try to shop and get stuff like that and right. kind of look in the same way. And um, Hun Smooth started doing songs. Smooth was writing songs for the both of them. Okay. And um, they would go perform the songs. And they were dope songs. Like, it was like building up her craft because she didn't she didn't have a name at the time. Right. Plus, we was, she was trying to find her voice. Okay. So Smooth was finding the voice for her as well as her style. Yo, y'all did a Smooth, good job, You know what man. I'm saying? Thanks, bro. Because after that, because she just went Thanks. from there. Yeah, because to be honest with you, after after us, she just got signed. Def Jam. Damn. It was like, it was no artist development. It right. was no, we did all of that. Right. So this is why one of the reasons why a lot of people don't know, when I got signed at Def Jam, Def Jam was paying me to do artist development. Okay. So when the DMX came to Def Jam, mm -hmm. I had to be in the studio with DMX. Yeah. So we was in there while me and him had to come in together and they wanted me to record songs with him mm -hmm. to see where he was at on the level of song making. Okay. Which, once I got in the studio the first time with him, I already knew where he was at. Right. Me and a nigga rhymed in there for like three hours <laughs> straight. Yeah. One of the only niggas I know that can go with me head to head like that for yeah. that long. Yeah, if we have cameras I'm back in, we get it, that foot down. But you crazy. know, the, the best thing out of it, you know, we had our managers there, yeah. and all of them were there. So we had people in there that watched you it. You had to be there. And you had to be moments. there mm -hmm. because it was only me and X in that room. That's crazy. So there was no other rapper in the room but us and management and business people. Yeah. So. That's how we came up with the song called The Heist. We was able to do that song together mm -hmm. right on the spot. And X would tell me, he said, yo, Treg, you you one of the only rappers that I would ever do a solo song with. And I didn't believe him at that time. Well, if you look at his career all the way up to now, really think about what other artists he ever did a That's solo true. song yeah. with. You understand? So. It's not that many features on his albums like that. There you go. Yeah. And especially word for word, right. line for line. Yeah. I, now he'll do it with his team. Mm -hmm. Locks. Yeah. That's his team. Yeah. Pope, they gonna do that with them. You suspect that? Yeah. But outsiders, when X said what he said, it meant a lot because I watched it through the years and said, I ain't hear. I'm listening to all the albums. I'm looking for that one on one with somebody. Mm -hmm. Can't find it. Can't find it. <laughs> Can't find it. So X meant what he said and said what he meant. Exactly. And I always respected him for that. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because he told me that day in that room, bro, it ain't going to be nobody else I do a song with on a mm -hmm. solo tip met like him, this. Met him before, too. You know? 
Same thing when I when I when I feel this when we lock like this mm -hmm. and hug like I could feel that yep. you could feel the vibration you can you All know if day, that's a man. good person All right there if they, if they genuine that's and right you know what I'm saying and to be honest with you I was so mad even when I didn't drop my project you know what I'm saying I was I was upset about it but but I didn't let it mess with me meaning the first walked, album the, yeah the first the fifty fifty gamble mm -hmm. with with my stuff when I didn't drop it I was feeling a little way about it but I was just also smart enough to know independently is how I came in yeah but the the you the, know? the bus single was off that album so yeah it was still they were still putting out singles off they that wanted album. to put singles out off the album yeah. which they you know I was like I agreed to my thing was with with the with the album. I just wanted the full album to be released because yeah. the full album, the, the the way Russell had planned the album to be, he wanted it to be a movie. Oh, wow. So okay. if, you, if you listen to Hitman for Hire, mm -hmm. if you listen to certain things that have those old music tracks yeah. and sound like a movie already when it's coming on, yeah. it was being set up for black mafia, for, for black gangsters, right. for black mafia movement. Um, and we was going to be the first ones touching on that. You know, and it was just a lot of other people at Def Jam. They redirected because you had you had your party people over here that mm -hmm. wanted to hear party songs. Mm -hmm. Then you had your hip hop hip hoppers that wanted to hear broken language type music. Right. Then yeah. you know what I'm saying. Then you had your money makers that's there that understand the record sells. Yeah, they like we need a pop song. Yeah, you know so. <laughs> yeah. You know when you're going through all them different channels like that. Me personally, I had. Uh, probably two or one of everything mm -hmm. and once they realize oh man he do have everything we're asking for the pop the hip-hop the they just didn't know now which direction to drop That's which direction crazy. to go this is why you have the my crew can't go for that yeah you got the bus yeah you know what i'm saying that's yep. why you got yep. them type of songs because they trying to figure out should we slide these songs in and I'm telling them, nah, just put out Hitman for Hire. Because Hitman for Hire is going to take me somewhere else uh -huh. that me and Russell was talking about. Right. That's the setup for that. Okay. See, when you got so many people at a record label that don't understand the setup, they see it from whatever angle they see it from. Yeah. And that's what it was. It was just so much clash. And then you had, I was signed to No Doubt Entertainment, which was Dante Ross. And Dante Ross had his hands in a lot of things that was going on. So and that was like connected to Def Jam? Yeah. No they, Doubt? Oh, okay. They, no Doubt Entertainment was signed to Def Jam. Oh, okay. So I came in with No Doubt Entertainment okay. for Def Jam. It was kind of like a third party. Right. You know? And, um, so, and But Smooth was at Profile. Smooth was you, on Profile. You were over here with No Doubt Def Jam. Right. And then y'all had something together Tommy with Tommy Boy. Boy Records. Right. But remember... I wasn't signed to no record label when Broken Language was out. Right. Oh, right, I was right, right. a free agent. Okay. I was number one on the radio. But that as also a free agent sprung board what it's, you was about to do right, too. Right. Because I had Puffy. I had everybody coming at me. Yeah. Trying to you know sign me to the. Um, and that was them. a good alley oop too. Oh yeah, that was <sighs> definitely because um I'll be honest with you, Profile wanted to sign me, but I was just too smart. Then I just knew not to throw too many eggs in the same basket. How did How did you learn? How did you How did that like learn how to be on that type of time as far as like your business and stuff like that from the streets <laughs> straight like that negotiating things in yeah. the streets and how you negotiate and just understanding you have the power mm -hmm. when something is in your hand or it's about negotiation so you you put down what you want and like and give it to them and then they kind of throw it back what they want and like and y'all yeah. both come to that agreement and understand it and that was something that I always did with every contract we ever dealt with. This is one of the reasons why we got our masters. Oh, this is okay. why we own our publishing. Right. You know, we have all of that right now. You so, know. So like, do the label put like a like a business team around y'all? Like um, no. Nah. Or that's something y'all got to figure out yourself. What happens is, as as a management team that moves you on the outside of the record label, you have to make sure your management team and your team is together. Okay. Inside the record company they will put a team around you in the company. And that's more of the marketing team. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Stuff like okay, that. Okay. See, this the, is um, good information, y'all, for these new artists. Yeah, that wanted, because that, that's coming back in. then when they was doing it like that, your marketing team that was there and your radio team and everybody like that, they had to make sure that that record got spins mm -hmm. or got to the record station or you know got yeah. you out there the way you want to. And if you didn't have a good marketing team that liked you as an artist or liked your music, right. They'll get that uh, promos and go outside and 
they give them to anybody. <laughs> or they probably toss them shits in the garbage. Yeah. You understand? You had a lot of dudes like that back in the days that wasn't getting paid. Right. Record label wasn't paying a lot of these dudes to go out and, and promote and, and push your records. So they was like a street team yeah, that right. wasn't getting paid. Damn. So putting up the posters and all that. They putting up the posters and everything. The city. Yeah. But you know, let me tell y'all, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you this. Give them jewels, B. Give them jewels. I'm gonna tell you man. this. It was a time where I had to step in and my other partner, uh, you know, we had to step in stereo, big up. And we knew that every record label wasn't paying the marketing team. Mm -hmm. So we knew what was going on. So advertising and marketing CDs, which these guys had them all in their hand every single day, yeah. they didn't understand that was their money. Which you can go to any record store and resell those promos to the record store, and the record store will re barcode them up, barcode them, and repackage them, mm -hmm. and put them in the store and sell them. So here it is: is the marketing team running around can't make a dollar, but you got over thirty five hundred dollars worth of merchandise in your hand, which turns into seven thousand dollars when you take it to the store. Right, and you got that in your hand every single day, but the company is trying to do you dirty purposely. They know they ain't paying you. They know they ain't giving you no money, mm -hmm. but they don't realize that you can over make whatever than any of them is making up there at any time and any day as being someone as a marketing promotion team at the wow. label. Yeah. They didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I had to come in and teach it to them. Because I'm like, while you record labels running around here telling, oh, we don't have a budget for you today. We don't have a dollar for you today. But you got a truck out there with 10,000 CDs yeah. in it that you about to give out free. <sighs> you about to give out free. And you got a whole team that you got out here working your stuff as a record label. Yeah. And you don't get them a dime. Damn. So I used to go to them and say, hey, how much you got in that van? Do you know you can go here and get this much right now for the whole thing? <sighs> and they'd be like, what? Right. Try me. <laughs> Try me. And they would go right to it and get the money. Wow. So I'm showing them a whole different level of the game. Right. While y'all ripping off the artists and ripping them off this way, y'all can be ripped off too. Okay? And you, and you said that's just the promo CD. And that's and all just that. the promos. That's just the promos. Dang. So every artist you have under your record label, I can make a million dollars off of each one of them if I want to. Mm -hmm. But see, when you, when, when you ain't trying to do the artist dirty, when you ain't trying to hurt their pocket, cause right. that's who pocket get hurt after a while. Right. The company pocket hurts, but that's their money, that's their pocket. You don't want to hurt them. Yeah. So this is the reason why a person like me slides back off of it. It's no need to take from them because then I hurt the, the dudes that I'm cool with, the, the artists that I deal with. I, you know what I'm saying? They got families, man. They got, yeah. you know, I'm, so, I have a conscience. So that was like part of the reason why you left Def Jam. It was. It was when I left Def Jam. I left Def Jam because they're saying you got dropped, but you. I never much, got dropped. You left. I left. I left on my own from Def Jam and told Russell I wanted to leave. Told mm -hmm. everybody I wanted to leave, and this is the reason why Russell called over to, to Tom Silverman and said, "Hey, I'm sending Trigger over there." Oh, okay. Tommy Boy. Yeah. It was just that simple. Like right. any deal I wanted at that time, I could have had. Okay. It's not a deal that was on the table I could I couldn't get. Cause I had too many people behind me that was uh, like, "Hey, just come over here. For you. We're sounding." Yeah, they was vouching you know, for yeah. you. Yeah, and to this day now, I still got so many people that hit me. Trigger, come on, man, come back over yeah. here. <laughs> you know. Yeah, cause y'all so like under the radar. It's we don't hardly see y'all out there. You and your right. brother smooth. We don't really see y'all out there. So it's like. What are y'all with? What are they doing? Yeah. You know, it's a like a mystery. People, yeah, you you two crazy. guys are like a mystery Let out here. Let me tell you something. It's crazy <laughs> because even with us not doing the music stuff, like we open a tractor trailer company. Mm -hmm. We open an armed security company that, that has bell agents, yeah. um, private investigation. We do personal protection, executive protection. Um, we also, you know, have unarmed security officers. Mm -hmm. So just stepping out of the world of hip hop, getting into a whole nother world, right. back into the regular reality of life right. and things. Cause I've always, that's what I've always wanted to do regardless of rap music. Yeah. I just still want to be normal. No you doubt. know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> everybody be like, yo Trey, you don't take this to the heart. I'm like, because man, when you got a talent God gave you, you know, you use your talent to your best ability, mm -hmm. but you don't use the talent to brag a life. Right. You know what I'm saying? 
to put yourself in the forefront like you better than people mm -hmm. or like you you know because your talent is your talent yeah, that'll make to me inspire better others. yeah to inspire but yeah. don't make me better than nobody no else doubt. you know that's how i look at yeah. it so when i'm walking in the room and you got so many people like yo trey 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 yo this and that and then you ignoring my homie standing here mm -hmm. he's important like i'm important exactly you know what i'm saying yep. because he's important to me yep more than you can even imagine so Sometimes they look at me and just and want to give me that big up and shout out. And I'm like, man, you don't even know this brother done held me down for the last exactly. such and such, you exactly, know? Yep. And he's one of the reasons why I'm even smiling mm -hmm. right now. And that's around. why I keep my peoples around me, too. Even exactly. my sons, when I'm like in Atlanta, they'll come with me on sets. Mm -hmm. If wherever I'm at, if I could bring like my partner right here, Wink, they'll right. come with me. Wherever I'm at, if I could pull one of my guys with me, they, they oh, coming man. right with me. They help me out, set up. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And that's I'm right. getting credit on the show. Mm -hmm. That's just me showing my love back to and them. And that's how you do it. Because I'm going to tell you, with me and Smooth, when we did... We um with iced tea we put out the um energy drink, uh liquid ice. Yeah, talk about how you and y'all y'all iced tea hooked up too. Yeah, we hooked up with ice. He when he came to New York, he was on the radio, hot ninety seven. Okay. And um he he knew he knew a couple of people, you know, family members of ours that was down with syndicate. Okay. That's you know, I got a I got a family member that's incarcerated, been incarcerated, he's doing life. Mm -hmm. He's doing life. Ice always say he's doing life. That's how you look at it. Yeah. Cause that's Ice Boy. No doubt. He's family. You know what I'm saying? So when Ice came to New York, he said, um, he was on a radio station. He was like, hey, man, anybody, you know, get in touch with Smooth and Trigger, man. You know, I want to see them. You know, mm -hmm. it's a, it, I want to build with them and things like that. And um, Mickey Benz, Mickey Benson. McBenzo. Yeah, yeah. Big up the McBenzo. Yeah, that's sure. I seen him too at the, uh, that, that's, that's one the, of the big events OG at right there. 50th. Definitely. The week, the week, the concert was at the Yankee Stadium. I seen him at one of the events that week. Yeah, right. shout out to Mc, him. Mc Benzo, man, Benzo, without yeah. without him, a lot of things wouldn't wouldn't have set play at the okay. time. You know what I'm saying? So he Mick, was like the connector. Yeah, Mick is just one of them niggas. You know, if 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 he, he, he real tight with Ice, so you know, if Ice be like Mick, I need you to do something. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Mick could jump on it. He okay. ain't one of them type of dudes. Like, I got you, and then don't do nothing. Yeah, he's one of them that jumps on it. You know, and he make things happen. So he reached out to us and was like, Yo. You know, Bird want to see y'all. He want to meet y'all. What's up? Mm -hmm. Boom, we jumped right on it. Went, sat down, we talked, you know. And the relationship, I mean, the minute we met each other, oh, it was dang. like the East Coast, West Coast thing, we didn't even we didn't even see that in our vision. So that was around that time, too? That that was a little bit before that. The Biggie yeah. and Pac situation? Yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. So, wow. so me and Smooth, we go to, um, we meet up. I was like, yeah, I want y'all to come to L.A. We go to L.A., go go this pad out in LA mm -hmm. we out there with him for like about a week and change and then we build and we build and Ice like yo I got this record company I'm doing called Coroner Records yeah he like what's up y'all want to be a part of it we like hell yeah what's yeah. good what we doing <laughs> right he like well me you and Smooth we going it's gonna be our record label we're gonna get shirts we're gonna get there this and that mm -hmm. and we're gonna do a state we're gonna go state to state and do a tour we're just gonna tour fuck it and we did it Wow. We went and we went and did a a, a rental car tour. Yeah, <laughs> word, just all Cadillacs, just the whole tour. We went all the whole fucking ninety five everywhere, Canada, this place, that you name it. We was there. We did. I came back off tour, and we sitting there, and Ice is like, "Yo, so what we trying to do next? What's 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 going yeah, on?" Yeah, that's crazy. And I'm like, "Yo, that's we got up. this SMG thing. It's a company I started when I was thirteen. You know what I'm saying?" Yeah. And he's like, "What? What it stand for?" And we tell him what it stand for. And he's like, nigga, that's the game. He like, sex, money, and guns, that's the game. Mm -hmm. He like, so what's going on? So we talked about that, and he was talking about leaving L.A. at the time to come do Law & Order. Okay. So we sitting there like, you know, like, yo, you should do it at first. I was like, I don't know, man. I ain't trying to be, because they want me to be a cop. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? He on that page and shit. Yeah. But me and Smooth, you know, we just them homies that love to see our homie do, right. do well, man. Yeah, because that's dope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know? And we we was just pushing them on, like, nah, homie, you should go do that. Right, right. That's a good look for uh, you. Yeah. Later with the hood. Say, bro. Like, <laughs> right. That's a good look, baby. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So he fell into it. He was just like, you know what? I'm going to make a decision on it. And he made the great decision, man. Yeah, because he definitely the, shouted y'all out. We, uh, the recent drink champs he was on, right, he definitely, definitely shouted y'all out. I was like, oh, Yeah, shit. he made, made a great decision, man. We wound up coming back. When, when we came to New York, it was like Ice was kind of like moving around like a free man right now. Yeah. So me and him every night, we in every club you could think of. Mm -hmm. um, we everywhere. We trying to party our life out. <laughs> yeah. But then it got to the point 
where you know he kept saying i don't want to do this every night i can't do this every night i yeah. gotta find some solid because ice is a solid dude man he always been like that I like so. family man mm -hmm. always taking care of family and friends so when he said it that instantly just hit me boom it was no questioning it was no second guessing mm -hmm. i'm like my dude back to hustle mode period the right. minute he mentioned Let's it so i'm it. like I'm like, yo, I'm with you on that, big homie, whatever you're trying to do. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, yo, let's get in the studio, get this SMG album done. We in the studio. I went straight in the studio. Boom, start recording. Executive produced the whole album. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? And they had everybody come in and drop their verses down and shit like that. Yeah. And we wound up taking that album, going out on tour, on Me, Him, and Smooth. What year was this? And this album? That was 2004, 2003, oh, wow. 2004. Okay. So we out in Europe on the whole tour. You know, we out there tour is crazy we we selling out every show every show is sold out yeah. and the album wasn't even out yet so so can you imagine selling out shows and nobody heard the album yet <laughs> right.